Hi guys, welcome to Time Valley Motorhomes. I'm Callum and this is the handover of a Elder Signature 115, which is exclusive to Time Valley Motorhomes. So as we start the walk round on the driver's side of the vehicle first, the first locker you get to is how to hook the vehicle up to mains electric. So whether you are on site or whether you're at home and you want to charge your leisure battery. So using the Trimark key, you'll be able to pop it in there, turn it and open the door. In here you do have the location of your leisure battery. So this leisure battery is a 95 amp hour leisure battery. And you also do have your hookup point. So to hook the vehicle up, you'd lift the collar up, slide the wire into the groove and connect. It means that you can lock this locker and seal it and it's completely dry lined in there and you hook up safe. Here's a top tip for you, if you are putting the vehicle into storage, if you're not lucky enough to keep it at home, in the winter you may want to just remove this battery and take it home with you and put on a charger. Just because if you don't charge the leisure battery and you allow it to go flat and it stays flat for a while, it can damage the cells of the battery and then it won't receive a charge and it won't as work as, as well as it used to because the cells will be broken so it will not take 100% charge anymore. Next to it you've got your external shower point, so this just comes out, this stopper, it's quite fiddly, but you, but you can pull it out, pop your hose in there, it is only a cold water feed, making sure the pump's on, on the other end of the trigger gun you've got a, on the other end of the hose even you've got a trigger gun, and you can hose the dog off, the bikes, the boots, whatever you need to hose off before packing it away in the van. This is your intake for your heating system and that is your breather pipe for your boiler so if that drips it's not a fault it's because it's a condensing boiler it happens on wheel heating systems. Coming further back you've got your blue tap this is your fresh water drain off point so to drain the fresh water off say you're parking it up for the winter or you not using it for a couple of weeks or you've taken on a source of contaminated water and you want to drain it off you simply just open the valve and allow the water to drain out in the winter make sure that this is fully drained off and the tap is left open to avoid water from freezing in the tanks and causing any damage to the water system come around the back of the van you do have your high level brake light your reversing camera Two vents there for your microwave, two fridge vents. You've got your water, so this is where you'd fill up with fresh water. So I'll just go and grab the keys. So you've got two round headed keys. One does the habitation door, one does your water cap. So what you need to do is pop it in, turn it. Remove the cap, put the flat end of the hose into the van. Make sure you carry a hose with you because the site won't provide the hose, they'll only provide a, a brass tap. So put the flat end of the hose into the van, connect the other end of the hose to the tap so you will need some hose connections. Fill it until it either overflows, which is full, or you look on board and that is enough water on board for you, which you can see on the control panel gauge. This is your cassette toilet, so to use your cassette toilet to remove it when it indicates that it's full, lift the orange handle and slide the cassette out, pull the handle up and drag it to your waste disposal site if it's too heavy to carry, which is normally beside your toilet block, and to empty it's as easy as remove the grey cap, pop that to one side, Start to pour the cassette and when you start pouring just press this orange button in. It'll just allow a bit of air in and it'll stop it glugging. You'll be able to empty the cassette. Once you've emptied it there's normally a tap there so you pop a bit of water in, put the cap back on, give it a rinse, tip out again before going in with a cap full of chemical which is 120 mil. So 120 mil of the chemical which can either be the green or the blue. You can measure it out or you can just pour it in the spout if you want to what you think is 120 mil. 
Once you've done that, you can pop it straight back into the van and it'll click into place. Coming round to the passenger side of the van, this is your external gas point. So what this does is it uses the bottle on board instead of carrying a spare bottle so that you can connect to this point for your barbecue or Kadak. So all you need is a quick release connection which connects into here. Two Jubilee clips, one to connect the quick release connection onto the orange gas hose and another to connect it onto the barbecue or Kadak. Once you've connected it all up, you can turn the tap on. So you can turn it on and up, but it'll only open when that is connected to. And that'll use the bottles on board instead of carrying a spare. So if you want to do some outdoor cooking, you can. The Metic awning, oil and light, grey water. So this is any waste that you've put down a plug hole. So shower water, hand basin water, dishes water, any cups of tea or anything that you've drained off. What you need to do is on the way out of your site, if you're not on a super site where you can carry a length of hose and just connect it to here and leave it open all the time because there's normally a gully at the back of the site, that's a fully serviced pitch. If you're on just a normal freestanding pitch, a hard standing pitch should I, say, should I say, you can open it up and leave, when you leave the site, open it up over the grid and drain this off. You don't want to travel around with this water because this water is dirty. You can't use it again, it's just going to add weight that you don't need to carry the added weight because it's going to impact your payload and impact the fuel that the engine's running. So it'll be worse on miles per gallon than it is without that water being in. So you'll get better fuel economy not carrying this added waste water around with you. Here you've got your gas locker, that's my test bottle, but this motorhome does run on propane. Um, propane has a lot higher of a freezing point than butane. Butane is known as summer gas, so it will freeze in the winter, whereas butane won't. Uh, whereas propane won't, butane will. What you need to do is, you can get two six kilogram bottles in here. Once you put the bottle on, tie it in. To connect the pigtail, it's left to tighten, right to loosen. So it's the opposite way with it being gas. And this is a hand tightened pigtail. So you don't need a spanner, you just need to hand tighten it until it's tight. Once it's tight, you can turn the bottle on. Just a couple of turns. And then before you leave, make sure you isolate your gas supply. So turn your bottle off. Once you've turned your bottle off, you're now ready and safe to travel. But make sure it's off before you hit the road. Coming to the passenger door, you've got your diesel, which is opens with the main ignition key. And underneath, you've got AdBlue. So the AdBlue tank on this vehicle is 19 litres. And it'll do 5,500 mile on a full 19 litres. Once you've covered 4,000 mile and you've got 1,500 miles left, the AdBlue light will come on between the temperature and fuel gauge and it looks like an exhaust light. And all you need to do is top your AdBlue up. So whether that's buying it on the pump, which is about 150 a litre, which is at most petrol forecourts now, because most new diesel trucks and vehicles take AdBlue. Or you can buy it in the drums from your local car shops, such as Halfords, Eurocar Parts, anywhere that does car factors. You can buy our blue and you can top it up. Tire pressure, so five bar on the front, which is 72.3 psi, and five and a half bar on the back, which is 75, 79.5 psi. Engine battery lives underneath this compartment in the floor, so should you ever need to change it, it's not under the bonnet, it's under here. Should you ever need to put a charger on just that battery, lift that cover up and you can access the top of the terminals of the engine battery. Tool kits underneath the passenger seat which includes a jack and a brace and a tonai. And the bonnet release is just on here. So you've got all your fluids, the main one being the screen wash, followed by 
You can move the covers, tabs in this cover, lift this cover off, and you've got power steering fluid, coolant, and brake fluid. Oil filler and a dipstick for checking the levels of the engine. Paint codes on this sticker here. Weight plates on there, so 3.3 tonne gross vehicle weight, which is the 115. 5,300, so 5.3 ton if you were to put a tow bar on and tow with it, so it means you've got a, you can tow two ton behind the motorhome, but you can't exceed that. You've got a unique build number there, your SGE number, so if you ever need any parts, quote that number, and if you ever need to jump start it, because the battery's underneath the cab floor, you do have jumping points underneath the bonnet, and this is your earth here. And then put your key between the air filter and the fuse box, Lift that up and that is your positive terminal for giving or receiving a jump start. So when you're coming into the van and you're wanting power on, whether that be 12 volt, if you're not hooked up, or if you are hooked up, you can get mains voltage, which is 230 volt. You need to turn on your master switch here, which is this bottom button. So that'll turn on your 12 volt system. If you're hooked up, then you'll be able to use the three pin plugs around the van. If not, they won't work because it's just 12 volt. So you turn on your master switch, then you turn on your lights. That is your master switch for your lights just here. Then they all are individually switched around the van. You can see the voltage of the leisure battery there at the top, but take the hook about to get a true reflection of the leisure battery charge. Because when you're hooked up, it will give a false reading. And if you want to see how much water you've got on board, you use this little switch here. And you can see there that it's full. So we've got a full tank of fresh water on board. Once you know you've got water on board, you can turn the pump on, which is this one here. And then when you open any taps, there's a micro switch in the tap. The pump will pressurize itself. When you turn that on, it'll stop. And then as, I, as I'm saying, when you open the taps, there's a micro switch in there and it will turn the pump on. And then as soon as you shut the supply off the tap, it will turn it off. You've got awning, which is your awning light on the outside of the vehicle, and you've got your tank heaters. Your tank heaters are more for in the winter. If it's gonna freeze overnight when you're away in the motorhome, you can turn these on to avoid the water from freezing in the fresh and wastewater tanks. So in the lounge here on the side of the wardrobe is the control panel for your wheel heating and hot water system. So I'm gonna insert a clip now, which is gonna show you how the wheel heating and hot water system works and how to choose your source when you arrive on site. So to work your heating and hot water, which is through a wheel system, this is your wheel control panel. So to operate, you've got your hot water at the top, heating at the bottom, plus and the minus is just the room temperature of the heating, goes up this rate scale all the way to 30 degrees. So we'll start off with the water. So should you have water on, the boiler's closed, you can start to heat your water when you arrive, either on your site or if you're wild camping. So you press the button here, and it'll go from off to a snowflake, which is frost start, which just keeps the water in the boiler above freezing at five degrees. You've got one wavy line, which indicates 750 watts of electric. So this is the lower output on electric. Should you be on a smaller CL site, or abroad where they don't give you as much electric as you get in the UK through hookup. Then you've got two wavy lines which is two kilowatts of electric which you can use on most sites throughout the UK. You've got gas. So this is gas on its own which you'd use if you're wild camping as you wouldn't have any other source to heat your water off than gas. You've got gas plus 750 watts of electric and gas plus 1850 watts of electric so this is mixed two so if you are in desperate need of water put both sources on together it will reduce the time it takes to heat the water to around anywhere between five and seven minutes for a full 10 liters and underneath you do have your heating so this is how to heat the motorhome so 750 watts of electric, 1850 watts of electric, 3 kilowatts of electric, so you've got 3 kilowatts on the heating which you don't have on the water so 
if the site can take you using all this electric you can use three kilowatts but sometimes some sites won't allow you to use this as it'll either trip the van or trip the site post so you may have to just use two gas on its own if you're wild camping and then gas and 1850 watts of electric together so this will reduce the time it takes to heat the motor home to around 10 minutes to get it up to temperature to take the chill off it and in the winter you would use that if you're away in the cold take the chill off the van and then take the turn the gas off and just put it back on to two kilowatts of electric to continue and maintain the temperature inside the vehicle plus and the minus like i said on here you can scroll right down and you can go to the moon so you see the little moon here that's nighttime mode that's 15 degrees and the snowflake is above five degrees to keep the temperature and the chill off the van inside if you ever get a red exclamation mark down the side whatever's failed say if it was the hot water the, the heating sorry so you press the heating and the plus button together press and hold and it'll eliminate that mark there and if it was the water the water and the plus button together and, and it will eliminate the exclamation mark down the side to reset the control panel but always turn your heat Turn them off. Allow the fans to go silent in the background before you turn the master switch off on your control panel. Otherwise, you can unsync the boiler sequence of turning the system off and you will get that red exclamation mark. So I've showed you how to reset it, but turn it off. Allow it to go silent inside the van until you either start the engine, turn your mains power button off or unhook the vehicle. So in the kitchen area, you do have an 800 watt microwave and your microwave is a mains voltage appliance. So you've got to be hooked up for that to work. And the best way, the microwave is always asleep. To wake it up, you need to press eco and it will come on. And then you'll be able to use your microwave as normal. You do have your three gas burners one electric hot plate and the electric hot plate is the back one there and you'll see that the light in the middle has lit up red so if you were on a site and you've paid for your electric don't use your gas if you can if you want to use your hot plate you can and you can turn that on to heat the pan up or if you need to use your gas There you are, you've got three lit gas rings. Once you've had any of the hobs on, including the electric one, you allow it to go cold so that you can put your hand upon it. Because if you put it, put the glass lid down when it's still too warm, this glass will shatter and it goes off with such a bang and it'll go into a million pieces and you'll be finding glass in the van for a few weeks after the event. So just be careful with that. Underneath you got your grill. And underneath your grill you do have your oven. So it's a fed fed oven. This is a sticker for the oven, so if you ever need any parts for it. All we'll ask for or any other motorhome and caravan dealer is a sticker on the oven so if you just provide with that, with that information we'll be able to get the right parts for your Fetford oven. Underneath you've got your plug for your electric hot plates should you ever need to isolate that and this side you've got your three gas taps for your hob, your oven and your fridge. Should you ever need to isolate an appliance we always recommend to turn the bottle off to be safe but if you're away while camping and it was one item that was leaking gas or causing a problem, you don't want to ruin your holiday. So you can isolate the appliance just by turning it like this. This is closed, this is open. But these are mainly for when the vehicle is annually serviced. The technician will shut off each gas appliance and test the gas system with them closed just to make sure there is no leaks. To operate your fridge, so your fridge is a Dometic fridge and it's a three-way fridge. So, this is off, so if you were storing the fridge, you'd have it off and you'd leave the door open. 
So on the door, there's a courtesy light, there's a little toggle here which, which you push in. So you need to push it in and pull it out. The two lugs will come out and it will mean that when you shut the door, it doesn't quite shut. There's a gap and it allows air to circulate in and out. So that's what you do if you were leaving it um, parked on the drive for a couple of weeks or you'd winterised it, you'd want to clean it out and leave the door open. However, when you're using it, you've got three sources you can use it on. Two being the main two sources, one being a travel mode. So, if I was planning on going away and you was lucky enough to keep this at home, a few days before I took the van up. So I took the van up just to charge my leisure battery, but I'd also put the fridge on to allow it to chill. So put on the picture of the plug, hook the van up. This will work as a mains household fridge on 230 volt, mains, mains electric. The night before, once I've done the shop, I'd bring all the shopping in and put it in the fridge. Once I've put it in the fridge, I'd allow it to chill overnight. And then when I'm ready to drive to my first site, or if you're going wild camping, depending on if you're going on a site or you're not, I'd put on a battery when I'm travelling. And the battery isn't off the leisure battery. The leisure battery can't power the fridge. It's when the vehicle is running, a feed from the engine alternator provides power to the fridge, which is just a 12 volt feed, so it acts like a giant cool box, so it's got to be chilled beforehand. When you run in, it'll just maintain the temperature. It'll get no warmer, but it'll get no cooler, but it'll just maintain the temperature of the fridge that it was previously set at and then if I arrive on my site I'd go back to mains once I've hooked the van up or if I was going wild camping or if I was going on to a Brit stop or a pub site um, just for a night I'd put on a gas to keep me shopping nice and fresh turned on the gas this is a temperature gauge so you can adjust it depending on always have it on max when pre-chilling turn it slightly down when you put your shopping in but you need to push this in when you've selected gas and use the ignition and you want the orange band to go into the green once it's gone into the green it is lit on gas and you can let go if you've had the gas off, it's always best to prime the gas through the hob first because the lines will be empty, so it'll take a little longer to light. But as you can see there, it's going. So I'll now let go. And that is lit on gas. So if I was well camping, my little orange line on my gas indication display is in the green which means it's working on gas so the burner is running on gas to cool the fridge down making sure your pumps on you'll be able to open the tap and you get a pressurized flow of water so this is on hot and that is red hot that water there you can see the steam coming off the water so your hot water system is working as it should Plug for the microwave should you ever need it and you've got storage for your crockery at the top. An extension for a chopping board if you are needing that extra worktop space when using the hob. Slide out drawers, make sure that all your catches are always pushed in before you travel. Just means they're locked into place. And you've got a little bit of storage at the bottom there. So now in the washroom of the 115, you do have your toilet, so your toilet is very easy to use. Making sure the pump's on, press the blue button, you'll get some fresh water flush, which comes from the main fresh water tank. So always put a small amount of water in the toilet first. It helps lubricate the seal and the blade so it doesn't become um, stiff with the seal sticking. So Put a bit of water in before you use the toilet you want to get rid of the water and open the blade it stops the blade from becoming very messy so all you need to do is slide this grey handle to the right now you can use the toilet once you've used the toilet you can flush it 
and close this blade back to the left. If this blade was left in the open position to the right, the cassette won't come out the back of the van. So it needs to be closed for the cassette to come out because the mechanism is still engaged. If you've bought the twin pack of chemical, which is the blue liquid and the pink liquid, the pink liquid doesn't go anywhere on this motorhome because it doesn't have a separate header tank. However, what you can do is if you get a spray bottle, put a small amount of pink in, dilute it, spray the bowl, keep it handy in the washroom, spray the bowl, flush it, it'll do the same job. And it'll clean your toilet bowl out and provide a bit of a smell neutralizer in the washroom. Toilet cabinet, towel and toilet roll holder, toothbrush holder, your sink plug pushes in and out, and then when you winterize, don't leave your shower head on your hose and leave it stood up like so. Unscrew it, take the head off and just lie that in a cupboard just so no water sitting in the head of the shower head and no water sitting in this pipe because what I would do is unscrew it and lie the hose down in the shower tray with all your mixer taps. You've got to leave your mixer taps open when you're draining the vehicle off of water. So when you're parking it up for the winter, um, when we're experiencing colder temperatures, leave all the mixer taps throughout the vehicle open. So shower, hand basin, kitchen sink, freshen the waste outside, and then you'd open your boiler, which I'll explain further on in the video when we get to the boiler. With the shower tray and toilet, never use any harsh chemicals on the toilet cause it, or the shower tray because they're plastic. You'll, you'll make a horrible mark on them and it'll be a yellow stained look so that all soapy water microfiber cloths no bleach because you will stain the finish so just be careful with what you're cleaning your washroom out with in the cupboard above the telly on this vehicle so you get your tv aerial as standard from the factory and should you be getting problems with the TV aerial, not getting a signal on the telly, what you can do is you can loosen the nut off and you can push the aerial up, tighten, and then you can turn the black collar. And what that does is it tilts the aerial from side to side, front to back, to pick up the best TV signal it can. But what I would personally do is when I arrive on my site, if it doesn't receive a signal straight away, just have a look to either side of your neighbours' caravans or motorhomes and see which direction they're pointing their aerials in and point yours in the same because they'll probably, they've probably messed on for 10-15 minutes getting the perfect signal. So to avoid you wasting your time, just point yours in a similar direction. When I'm finished and I'm ready to leave, loosen it off, pull the stem in and tighten it. It will just mean that the wind can't get beneath the aerial and cause any damage. There is a tele booster on here as well on your teleco box so you can adjust this. So should it be too still pixelating on full you can turn it down to see if that helps or you can go down the route of directing the aerial. This is an additional item, so this is fitted to this vehicle, it might not be fitted to all vehicles, it depends on what the last previous keeper has put on the vehicle. So this is a 4G Wi-Fi system. So you need to turn it on at the bottom and it'll power it up. There's an aerial on the roof which is 10 times stronger than your phone aerial that's built into your smartphone. So what I would do is get a data only SIM card, you can get great deals, pay monthly deals from the likes of Smarty or you can go down the route of going through your phone provider and seeing how much they would provide, um, how much it would cost to get a SIM through them. Depend on what you use it for, if you're going to use a lot of Netflix and streaming you'll need a unlimited one, if you just want it to surf the internet on your iPads you might just need a 50 to 100 gig a month. But what you need to do is you need to pop the sim in the back, so remove the back of this. Pop the sim card in. So you've got two sims you can put in, so you can put a micro or a standard sim in. Pop that in there once you've activated it. 
Passwords on the bottom here, sticker, so you might just want to write that down or keep it somewhere handy so you don't have to take the back off every time you want to connect the device. Turn it on. Pop it onto the magnet mount. And connect your devices. So you can connect up to 10 devices to this Hawaii router. And it'll come up on your phone as Hawaii. You'll know it's your van and you'll be able to connect to it. To operate your cello television. So you'll need to retune the telly every time you move sites because it'll pick up different sources. So all you need to do is press menu. It'll come up with the settings, go down to channels and go down to DTV auto search which is just above DTV manual search. Do an auto search and you can do it on all or you can do it on digital. ATV doesn't exist because I've got rid of analog about five year, five, six year ago. So you can press all or you can just press digital. Are you sure? Okay. And it'll search for as many channels as it can in your area. It'll find digital channels and radio channels as well. And it'll pick up the best it can. If it's still not picking up that channel, you can try and move the area like I've said in the previous clip. But what I would do is just try and see how many channels I can pick up for now. And then if you want to, you could readjust the aerial and try again. So underneath the bench seat behind the driver's seat is a location of two more gas taps, which are for the hot water system and the boiler system. So similar to the ones underneath the hob and oven, exactly the same way to isolate and turn off should you need. At the back, you've got your main drain down. So this red, or should I say this yellow toggle is your isolation for the boiler. So it allows the water out. So it's your drain down. So in the winter when we're experiencing colder temperatures, when you're not using the van, it's always best to drain the vehicle down. Because if not, you will become a victim of frost damage, which is where the water freezes in something and causes damage to either the pipelines, the tank, or the boiler itself. And it's a very costly mistake if it is the boiler. So what you need to do is turn this to the front. Do it without the pump on because the pump's kicking in in the background there. Turn it to the front like I've shown you. Turn it back to isolate it and that'll close it and allow it to hold water. So what you do is come in, put the control panel on, but don't put the pump on. You can put the lights on inside the van. Turn this to the front, open all the taps within the van, go outside and crack the fresh and the waste tanks open. Come back into the van and put the pump on and just blast the pump out for 10 seconds. It will make it will mean that any water that's in any pipes, any lines, or in the tap itself is spat out the taps into the waste which is open and there's no water left within the vehicle. Always do that because you don't want the pump to hold any water and freeze because the pump's about £200 to replace. And if you get any exclamation marks on the panel that you can't get rid of, there's a reset button so this is your hot water reset button so a little red button there you just press and hold for 30 seconds just here to reset your hot water system so to make the bed in the front lounge if you just lift and slide these bed extensions in the middle you can either pull the base cushion forward and the backrest in the back or the other way around it's entirely up to you what I'd personally do is turn the cushions upside down because you get a flatter surface to sleep on, but I'm just gonna show you where the cushions go. So it's as easy as that. The main cushions make the bed, but like I say, I would turn them upside down because you get a flatter surface to sleep on. You can put a fitted sheet on and it's a lot more comfortable to sleep on the back than it is the front because you get all the ridges of the bull nose and the ribs of the cushions where they've designed them to look um, aesthetically pleasing, whereas in the back it's just flat.